The Biggest Loser has transformed thousands of lives. And now it's your chance to live the Biggest Loser lifestyle at home. Whether you want to lose 5 or 50 pounds, the Biggest Loser at Home program is personalized to your goals. You're doing it, girl. Commit to getting healthy today, and you may be featured online. Or as an at-home success story in an episode next season. This is how we are going to save America. Go to BiggestLoser.com and sign up now. Welcome to our BiggestLoser.com hosted event with Cheryl Forberg, the nutritionist for The Biggest Loser. My name is Greg Hottinger. I'm a nutritionist myself, and I'm one of the community managers for The Biggest Loser at Home program. And I'm going to be your moderator for tonight's Hangout. I'd like to welcome our participants, uh, Jean, Kathy, uh, and Kevin, and our entire Biggest Loser at Home community. And we're also broadcasting live tonight at the Biggest Loser Resort in Malibu. Hello to everybody. Hi, Greg. Hello. Hi there, Kathy. All right, um, before we officially get started, I just want to give a short introduction of myself. I have a master's degree in nutrition. I'm a registered dietitian, as is Cheryl, and I'm a certified wellness coach. And I've been connected with the Biggest Loser online program for almost eight years now. And tonight's hangout is very exciting for me for two reasons. The first is the unique opportunity for us to spend some time with Cheryl uh, and really to learn from her. Her experience at the ranch and insights into healthy eating are invaluable to anyone striving to be healthier. Uh, second, the hangout is an extension of the community atmosphere that the Biggest Loser team and all of the members work so hard to create in the Biggest Loser at Home program. I've witnessed the power of being part of this community for, like I said, eight years and have witnessed just how powerful the support that is offered around the clock is as people are striving to make lifestyle change. We're excited to offer this Hangout as a new way of gathering together. Uh, and finally, I'd like to introduce Cheryl. Uh, let me give a brief intro, Cheryl, before we dive in. Cheryl is a registered dietitian. She is a James Beard award-winning chef a New York Times best-selling author. She received her culinary education at the California Culinary Academy in San Francisco. In 2004, Cheryl was selected as the nutritionist for The Biggest Loser. She co-wrote the eating plan for the show, and she has shared cooking and nutrition tips with the contestants for 13 seasons. Additionally, she has written or contributed to all of the books in the New York Times best-selling Biggest Loser series, including The Biggest Loser Six Weeks to a Healthier You, which was named the best diabetes diet and ranked second as the best weight loss diet by the U.S. News and World Report. She lives in Napa, California with her boyfriend, nine chickens, and one dog. And we're so fortunate to have you join us, Cheryl, uh, live in Malibu. How are you doing this evening? Great, great. I'm so happy to be here, but I do have to say that I have 14 chickens. Oh, you have 14. <laughs> All right. Expanding. I have to come and see them sometime. I would love that. Um, all right. Well, thank you, Cheryl. We're going to show a short video about our resorts, and then we're going to start taking questions. Um, so, with that, let's let's take a look at our video. You can have a life-changing experience just like the contestants on NBC's hit TV show, The Biggest Loser. Come to the Biggest Loser Resort, Niagara. <laughs> with a staff of world-class trainers and nutritionists and its new state-of-the-art independent health aquatic center, the Biggest Loser Resort Niagara can start you down the true path toward a healthier you. Call to make your reservation today and change your life. The Biggest Loser Resort Niagara. All new from The Biggest Loser. Get ripped with Power App Blast. Then take it up a notch with Power Cross Train. Keep going. Don't stop. Now at BiggestLoser.com. All right, we're back. So in our first hangout, Cheryl, we had Danny Allen, the uh, winner of last season, and she mentioned that she's a completely different person now. And we can see how the contestants physically transform by the end of the show. But do you notice transformations in the way contestants approach food and their daily choices when it comes to eating? Absolutely, Greg. It's been really amazing to watch over the course of 13 seasons. But 
One of my favorite things is coming back to the ranch to visit after the contestants have been there for a few weeks. And when they really start to get into their, find their groove with the exercise and the eating plan and the food journaling and all the things that we do on the show, as my colleagues here are doing here at the Biggest Loser Resort in Malibu, um, I see this incredible I, I see a light go on inside and I see the transformation beginning from the inside out and people have their hair starts to shine, their skin glows, of course they're shedding pounds and um, their confidence begins to build and it's just, it's an amazing thing to witness. Beautiful. So this transformational process is something that you see on an ongoing basis as you come back each time and spend time with the contestants. Yeah, it's really, it's incredible. It's my favorite part. Nice. Okay, so one of our uh, participants tonight, Kevin, has a question that he would ask you. Kevin, uh, if you can go ahead with your question. You bet. Hi, Cheryl. Uh, what are the top three guidelines that people can follow to ensure they're staying on track for a healthy diet? The top three. Okay, I'll... I'll try to abbreviate this to three. I think uh, the number one is that you really have to um, stay active and whether you're doing this at home or um, you're working with a trainer at the gym, it's really, really important to kick up your energy level and be diligent about it. Of course, you want to have a doctor's approval first if you haven't exercised in a while and you might want to hire a trainer or go to the gym to be sure that you're doing everything properly from the beginning because you don't want to get hurt. Um, the second thing is, you know, really staying on track with the eating plan. Um, and I, I'm going to be talking about that more in detail this evening in food journaling. But of course, that's the food and the nutrition and the exercise are really, really important. But the third part that's just as important is really having your head in the game and making sure that you're really focused on this and learning to prioritize yourself and your health. Because one of the things I've found um, from working on the show for 13 seasons is that even though everybody comes to the show and even to the resort here for different reasons, the one thing I find that everybody has in common is that they have been prioritizing their spouse, their kids, their family, their job, everyone and every thing else but themselves. So it's, it's time now to make that change and acknowledge that it's time to put you and your health first because if you don't, you're not going to be able to take care of anybody else. Thank you. You're welcome, Kevin. That's a great question, Kevin. Is there anything else there that, uh, that you want to follow up on just uh, based on what she just said? Well, basically the big question for me besides that is uh, the metabolism and, and the foods that would encourage uh, weight loss. Do you have any specific um, food categories or food types that would in, that would help in that area? So this is a million dollar question, Cheryl. The metabolism boosters. Sure. Well, the the first thing I would say about metabolism boosters is more about eliminating certain things than adding. And um, an easy rule to remember, but it's a really big change to make, is losing the white stuff: white flour, white rice, white sugar, white pasta. It's loaded with starch and calories, but the only nutrients that they contain are added back through fortification. So you want to avoid all of the white stuff. Um, and that's, that's a really big change. But it, after a couple weeks of that, it's kind of like going through detox. That change alone is really going to help improve your blood sugar levels, which is very commonly a problem with people that have excess weight. You want to get your blood sugar back in range, and this will help you keep your energy and your concentration up so you can have uh, the stamina to exercise. Great answer. So part of the transformation you're talking about is letting go of the white refined carbohydrates, replacing those with whole, whole versions, whole grain versions. Absolutely. Okay. We'd, uh, at this point, we'd like to move over to where you guys are, the live audience members uh, from the Biggest Loser Resort in Malibu and uh, take a question from your audience there. Anyone? Anna? Mm -hmm. okay. Sure, do you want to step up to the mic for Greg? Hello, my name's Hannah and I have a question for Cheryl. What is your take on food journaling? Uh, that's an excellent question, Hannah. Uh, food journaling is absolutely imperative on the ranch. It's one of the first things that we teach 
And it's an amazing learning tool because for people that haven't done it before, it makes you very accountable. Most of us love to graze throughout the day. I, th I think it's fair to say most of us. Um, and it's really easy to take extra sips and bites. And before you know it, the 50 calories, 100 calories, they all add up. And another thing I really, really noticed uh, since I've been working with the show is how many excess calories uh, we take in through our beverages alone. I had a young man, uh, season four, I think it was, who was having two six packs of uh, a regular soft drink every day and a gallon or two of sweet tea. He's from the South. He was taking in uh, over 2,200 calories a day from his beverages alone before he took a single bite of food. So for him, uh, it was really, really important to be writing down all of his beverages. Um, of course, we focus now on eating your calories and not drinking them because of this. But um, it's very, very important part of the show. That's something that you don't see every week on the show, but every single contestant completes food journals every single day and send them to me. And I analyze them every day throughout the show to share with the trainers and the doctors to be sure that everyone's getting the right number of calories, the right ratio of protein, carbohydrates, and those sorts of nutrients, and also to be sure that they're having enough fruits and vegetables. Um, so this is another thing I'm sure you're learning here at the resort, Hannah, and it's something that most of the contestants continue to do after they get home because it really helps them to stay on track. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank, you uh, thank you for that question. Yeah. Thank you for that thoughtful answer, Cheryl. Um, I, I, I can hear that tracking is key for what we call amnesia eating, right? That it, <laughs> it really shows you what you're eating and what you're not. Uh, I just want to acknowledge uh, we have another panelist, that's uh, Kimberly, and I just want to send a little quick shout out to all the panelists. How are you guys doing tonight? Doing great. Thank you. All right. We've heard from Kevin, and we're going to move around to uh, field some different questions here. Uh, I did want to take one from the at-home members, um, and, and you touched on this, Cheryl, um, just a little bit ago. Uh, but I want to hear just a little more detail. You know, one of the nutrition challenges that we all face in this culture is carbohydrates, particularly how restaurants um, are still serving mostly white bread, white rice, refined pastas, and the portions are often really big. So the question that, I, that comes up quite a bit on the message boards uh, is what's the approach to carbs on the ranch? Sure. Uh, well, we have a, a ratio of uh, macronutrients, which means carbohydrate, protein, and good fat. 45% uh, of our calories roughly come from carbohydrate, which includes fruits and vegetables, whole grain, and then there's also carb in some other foods, such as dairy, dairy products. Um, but our approach is that the grains that we have are all whole grains. There is no white stuff. And in general, um, we treat having grains as, as a treat because so many uh, of the cast um, and, and my own clients have a history of really overindulging in carbohydrates. Most people will say that is their downfall, whether it's a potato. Everybody raise your hand if, uh, right? Raise cereal, your hand. We all have crust, that challenge. Pastries. Yeah. There you go. Um, yeah, I'm it's, it's a real, it's a real big problem. So we treat it as, uh, I, I'm using the word treat, but we consider it a treat, and we usually recommend having the carbs with breakfast and just one serving, like a piece of bread, a serving of cereal, not a mixing bowl of cereal, a serving of cereal, according right. to the label on the package. Um, and you wouldn't believe how many times uh, I've heard that about having mixing bowls of cereal. I know there are a lot of people that are watching here tonight that uh, are used to eating their cereal out of a larger bowl. But anyway, we try to have... Um, one serving in the morning and then another at lunchtime. And typically at the ranch, we have protein and lots of veggies and salad for dinner. Okay, great. Great. Thank you for that. Um, certainly, it is probably one of the biggest challenges that we all face. And I think everybody's in the same boat there with being selective about carbs, looking for carbs, knowing that they're out there, they're at the natural food stores, they're at select restaurants, and yet. Um, the portions are still an issue, and trying to find balance. I, I heard you name all the healthier, you know, people forget sometimes that vegetables are carbs and, and fruit and uh, certainly healthy dairy products. So um, 
So 45 percent is is that target. Um, let's go. Let's go over to um, uh, Kathy. She's one of our our participants, our panelists tonight, and she has a question. Kathy, are you ready to ask your question to Cheryl? Yes, I am. Hi, Kathy. Right. Hey. Um, my question is, when did you get started cooking? Pardon me. And I can I can translate that if you uh, if you can't hear Cheryl. She she really wants to know how you got started with cooking and your passion for um, cooking and going to the culinary uh, academy. Oh, okay, sure. I actually am a chef first, and and I later became a registered dietitian. Uh, I was cooking in San Francisco, and I started cooking for private clients who had dietary needs. Some of them were trying to lose weight. Some of them were trying to lower their cholesterol. And at the time, uh, this was a few years ago, uh, at the time there were very few chefs that knew much about nutrition, and there weren't a lot of nutritionists at the time that knew about cooking. So I taught myself um, how to cook for my clients with dietary needs. And then I decided I really wanted to legitimize what I was doing. So I went back to school and got a bachelor's degree in nutrition and my registered dietitian credential. Great. Perfect connection. And uh, not too many people, not too many dietitians today have the skill level that you have. So it's really a, a perfect blend. Um, I, I wanted to go to your audience there behind you, Cheryl, to see if somebody else had a question that they would like to ask you. And if you could speak up into the mic a little louder so that the rest of us could hear. I know that Cheryl can hear you there. But uh, hi there. Hi, I'm Nicole. Hey, Nicole. Hi. I have a Go question ahead. for Cheryl. Um, even if you eat a, a balanced diet, is it still possible to get your daily requirement of vitamins and minerals from our food supply, or do you recommend supplementing? Oh, that's an excellent question. I like to say that supplements are supplemental. If, if you're eating uh, and following the guidelines that we recommend, you're having uh, four cups of fruits and vegetables every day, mostly veggies, and we aim for the higher water vegetables. We don't have starchy things like uh, we don't have potatoes, um, but we have um, all the lettuces and tomatoes and spinach, they're just every color of the rainbow, all sorts of vegetables, uh, quite a bit of fruit, lots of whole grains, lean protein, um, not only from uh, animal products such as chicken, lean beef now and then, but, but also from eggs, uh, beans and legumes, and uh, not to forget about good fats. We do have good fats. They're a really important part of a healthy eating plan, and that means that includes avocado, nuts and seeds, cooking oil, or olive oil. Um, but if you're eating a really wonderful variety of these foods uh, that I've just mentioned, you should be meeting all of your needs. And I think that taking a multiple vitamin is good insurance for the days that you're busy and you skip a meal or a snack. Um, women, as they're approaching 30s and 40s, they might need to supplement their calcium and certainly iron if the doctor recommends it. The only other supplement, I'm a really big fan of omega-3s, really high quality omega-3 supplements because most of us are deficient. But other than that, um, I'm not a real big fan of supplements. I think that we, sh we can and should tr strive to get all of these nutrients from our food. Thank all right, thank you for that question. That's a great answer, Cheryl. So really whole foods, a variety of quality whole foods is what I'm hearing you saying. Um, and, and just a quick follow-up on that. So healthy fats, there. you know, you've been around in this field long enough to see where avocado went from being on the out list to now so many programs are like it's an integral part. And if you don't like avocado, then it's turning towards other nuts and seeds and other monounsaturated fats. Can you speak to just having witnessed that change around healthy fats and what your thoughts are? Sure. I loved, I call myself the, uh, the dietitian who loves to talk about, the weight loss dietitian that loves to talk about eating fat because nice. uh, there was a period of time when, remember, I won't name the brand name, but there, were, uh, there was a line of uh, fat-free cookies that came out and people were waiting in line to get these cookies and they didn't realize that they were loaded with sugar and other things to compensate for the flavor loss with the fat. And so a lot of people for a period of time were feeling very fat phobic and they felt that if they were going to lose weight, they needed to cut fat out completely. 
but it's really important to point out that our body needs good fats. They contain a lot of really important vitamins that our body needs, uh, vitamin E, um, the omega-3s, as I mentioned. Uh, the other thing about really good fats, such as avocado, nuts and seeds, and olive oil, is that um, they, they transport vitamins and help us to absorb vitamins. So that's really key. Another point is that you may not know this uh, intellectually, but your body knows that gram for gram fat has more than twice as many calories as carbohydrate and protein. So that's why we have smaller portions of it. But because it's so calorie dense, it makes us to feel full. It, it helps us to feel full. So when you're having a salad, you don't want to have a bowl full of dry veggies. You want some avocado on there, a little bit of dressing or nuts and seeds because those help you to feel more satisfied and, and full. The, the last point about good fats that I really like to mention is that a lot of seasonings and spices are fat soluble. And what that means is that if we cook using a little bit of fat, it makes all the flavors taste much more mm. robust. So it's, it's really important to include good fats throughout the day. Nice, nice. I can hear that it makes you happy to encourage your, your patients and clients to eat more fat. That's, that's a nice gift there. We have a question from one of our live participants, Jean. And uh, Jean, if you're ready to ask your question to Cheryl, go ahead. I am. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Jean. Hi. Um, I've been uh, using the at-home program for about three months now, and uh, I'm doing pretty well with it. Uh, but uh, one of the things that I struggle with is is my sodium intake, and it seems to be very very high every day. W what can you recommend to to eat and what not to eat to control sodium levels? Sure. Uh, well, first of all, I can't help but wonder: Are you food journaling, Gene? I am. Okay. Can you see from your from your journals which foods are high in sodium? Because if you're eating really clean whole foods, you shouldn't have excess sodium. Are you eating some processed foods? Uh, I mean, I would have to go back and look at my journals. Um, I haven't, uh, I, I mean, I have to be totally honest. I'm not following the plan 100%, but, but I, I do try to stick to it as, 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 as much as I can. Uh, I'm just curious what, you know, what foods are really causing it to be that high. I know a lot of like pasta sauces, red, red sauce can cause, and I've totally stayed away from those in the last two months. Um, mm -hmm. But my levels still seem to be high, and I don't put salt on anything anymore. Okay. So. so dining out, if you're entering food that, you know, from a, a sandwich chain or something like that, the, the, uh, the cold cuts might have a lot of sodium or the condiments. Um, but what, what kind of levels are we talking about when you say your sodium is high? Um, three to 4,000. Three to four thousand. Okay, that's uh -huh. a little bit higher than we want. However, do you have high blood pressure? Or are you on any meds for that? Uh, I am. Okay, so your doctor has recommended that you cut back your sodium to twenty-five hundred milligrams a day or less. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay. So then you want. Okay. Um, I just want to have a little uh, interject a little thought about what happens at the ranch. A lot of the uh, casts that come to the ranch are on blood pressure meds along with a slew of others. They come with Ziploc bags sometimes of wow. uh, diabetes meds, high cholesterol, sleep apnea, I mean all sorts of uh, weight related conditions. And usually after a couple weeks of really rigorously following the plan and exercising like everybody around me here is, um, we're able to get people off their blood pressure meds really, really quickly. That's one of the top goals. Don't try this at home. But if you uh, are really diligent about eating clean and exercising I, and, and going back with your doctor to check your blood uh, pressure levels, I think you, you'll be surprised that you may be able to work your way off of them. And I would strongly encourage you to do that. The other thing at the ranch is um, in addition to getting everybody off the blood pressure meds, we have people always worrying about sodium when they're trying to lose weight because they hear that it retains water and when there's a weigh-in, nobody wants to uh, be carrying excess water weight. But if you're exercising extreme amounts like we are on the show, um, we definitely do not want to restrict their sodium. In fact, we sometimes give them electrolyte drinks after they work out because sodium, your balance of sodium and potassium is really, really important. And if you lose too much of it through perspiration, 
um, you can be in trouble too. So there's there are two different sides to that. But it's an excellent question. Yeah, ironically, I have a follow-up appointment with my doctor tomorrow. So excellent. So uh, hopefully, uh, I'll get some answers because I one of the, my goals was to get off of the blood pressure medication. That's, so, a, that's a wonderful goal, and just don't have any chips tonight before you go to bed. No, nah, I've, I've sworn those off, and uh, fortunately, Excellent. I've lost uh, uh, 34 pounds so far, and uh, hopefully uh -huh. that, will, uh, that will do it. Congratulations. Yeah. That's terrific. Thank you. Good for that's, you. Thank you. That's, that's awesome, Jean. Thank you for that great question. And, and Cheryl, what I heard you saying is uh, encouraging people to identify the higher sodium foods you know in the mostly whole foods there's going to be a few that stick out cottage cheese sometimes can be higher in sodium and certain deli meats and really pinpointing those and finding alternatives right finding substitutes for those and to get under that at least under that 3,000 milligram mark um, thank you Cheryl so let's uh, let's check in here we have a couple questions um, from Google Plus so Courtney Otto she wants to know your recommendations for cutting cravings. Do you have some suggestions there? One of my favorite suggestions, um, are the cravings related to sugar or chocolate by any chance? She did not specify in the question. She specify, okay. One of my favorite responses to this, uh, because I get a lot of chocolate craving questions and sugar cravings, and I usually tell people if you're going to have some sort of a sweetened treat try to wait till later on in the day because oftentimes if you have a weakness towards that and you start off with a, a sweet something for breakfast it just kind of keeps going and you want another bite another bite um, and one of the first things we teach everyone at the ranch is just to really learn to enjoy the sweetness of a piece of fruit and they are pretty much forced to do that right out of the gate because we don't have any sugar we don't have artificial sweeteners we do have stevia and um, I think there's a little bit of honey and maybe some agave nectar, but everybody knows how many calories those have, so they really don't use them so much. Uh, one of my favorite tips from uh, Michelle Aguilar, I believe she was the winner of season seven, um, she said that when she was really having a craving for chocolate or sweets, she would put uh, whitening trays in her mouth and um, whiten her teeth so it was a double whammy she was able to uh, avoid the craving and whiten her teeth at the same time I thought that was pretty good mm -hmm. um, brushing your teeth uh, can help because you get that different that minty flavor chewing gum um, drinking water and sometimes just trying to w focus on something else and see if the impulse passes maybe you really weren't that hungry after all okay that's um that's a great answer. So a little delay. Sometimes the delay can be effective, it sounds like, um, and distracting, getting involved in something else. And I can imagine the cravings after uh, a person, a, a contestant eliminates some of the sweets. It's probably hard for the first few days, and then it really subsides, drops off pretty significantly there. I wanted to uh, check in with your audience behind you, Cheryl, to see if anybody there has another question. We have lots of good questions over here, but I did want to check in. Is, is there anybody else? Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Hi, my name's Karen. Hi, Karen. And, and my question is, um, we've heard a lot about times to eat and when the latest you should eat or not eat. And so my question is, um, is there anything to that? Does that does that really hold water of so what timing? All right. Sure, sure. That's a great question. It's very, very important. Um, one of the things I find over and over again is that there are a lot of meal skippers out there. I find that a lot with male contestants that they have gone day after day with not having anything to eat until noon or maybe even one o'clock. And and certainly there are women that do this as well. Um, so the first thing I really like to point out is that skipping meals promotes weight gain not weight loss because when you wait too long and you you lose sight of your body's hunger cues and typically what you do is you eat too much too fast and you choose the wrong thing so it's really important to start off with breakfast and if you haven't done that in a long time and you're really not hungry just just start off with a snack in the morning having a little bit of Greek yogurt and some berries um, but what we typically recommend is having three meals and two snacks a day 
and we space them out three or four hours apart. This is really wonderful to get your blood sugar back on track. Uh, one out of four of the contestants that comes to the ranch has weight-related type 2 diabetes. One out of four. They all go home without it. And uh, that's a really wonderful thing that happens, and, and we're really happy, but it has a lot to do with uh, the eating plan and exercise and getting your blood sugar back on track. Um, in terms of how late should you eat, I think it's a really a subjective thing because some of us really prefer exercising in the morning, but some people like to exercise at night and they're hungry afterwards. So you kind of have to... Uh, Feel this out and find the new normal for you, but we usually have, um, we recommend having something to eat, either a snack or breakfast, as soon as you get up, and if you, you can have your two snacks either in between breakfast and lunch, or in between lunch and dinner, or if you tend to be hungrier at night, then you can have your second snack in the afternoon. You can have them where, wherever you like, but it's, it's a very subjective thing and you have to find what feels right for you. And sometimes it takes a few months to find that. Okay, great. Oh, all right, thank you for that question. And uh, so it's, it, I'm hearing tuning into your individuality and honoring that at the same time, realizing the biological needs of having food every three to four hours to, to balance out that appetite and blood sugar is really key. Um, okay, let me check in with Kimberly to see if you have a question. I don't want to put you on the spot, Kimberly, on, on our panel. Did you have a question that you wanted to ask Cheryl? Yes, I do have a question I'd like to ask. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Kimberly. Hi. Um, I have a real high demand job. Um, during an eight-hour span, I'm burning between 2,800 and 3,200 calories. Uh, by the time I get home from work, I'm wiped out. I'm wondering, is there certain foods I can eat that would give me a little more energy to see me through for the rest of the evening? I have to ask, my goodness, are you a, a rodeo jumper? <laughs> That's a lot of calories. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I walk between 8 and 11 miles a day at work. Okay. Um, non-stop yeah I'm pretty busy there <laughs> okay uh, well yeah that's that's a lot of exercise so do you have time are you making time during this busy work day to have regular meals and snacks um, we get four 15 minute breaks um, by the time we get there we're down to about seven minutes so um, whatever we grab is like grab it quick stuff it in your face and run back out mm -hmm. um, trying to eat something healthy like for breakfast I'll eat some oatmeal maybe a glass of milk um, okay. lunch usually is spinach salad with some little cheese or something on top of it um, not much for energy there what are you having though on these seven minute snack breaks what, what type of foods are you having basically I'll go in and I'll have a non-sweetened iced tea about eight ounces um, some carrot sticks some celery sticks maybe uh, they have like chopped meats Basically, but they're processed meats. So, uh -huh. okay. I think what you want to do is you want to be certain that you're having enough uh, protein throughout the day with carbohydrate. And a lot of people think that a healthy snack is an apple or an orange, and and those are healthy snacks. But you need to have protein. Mm -hmm with every meal and every snack. And there are a couple different reasons for this. One is that um, if you just have fruit, which is just carbohydrate, your blood sugar will go up and you'll feel a little bit energized and then it'll drop down again. And if you have protein with it, it slows the release of the blood sugar so that your energy and concentration will be sustained longer and then it'll drop down. So you wanna always have those two together. Um, the other reason is because if you're exercising or active at work as you are, you need to feed your muscles, and protein does that. Um, and the third thing is that when you have the protein with the carbohydrate, it increases your satiety or fullness, so you'll stay full longer. So I would just really, um, are you are you trying to follow a, a particular calorie level every day? I'm trying to, yeah, between 1,700 and 1,800 calories a day is what they suggested. Okay, um, and are, are you I can't at, eat that at, much. <laughs> oh, okay. Are you at the weight that you want to be? Oh, no. <laughs> I, okay. I, right now, yeah, I'd like to lose another 60 pounds. Okay. But the calorie budget they gave you is too high? I can't eat that much. <laughs> if okay. I were to eat that much, I would fall asleep. 
Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I think that, Greg, can we post uh, some guidelines, because I could go on for hours about this. Can we post some guidelines after this uh, Hangout somewhere? You bet. You bet. You send me any information that you want, and there's okay. a spot there that we'll put it there. Making okay. sure everybody's... Okay, perfect. That'd be great. Thank you. Okay. I'd love to do that. Thank you. And thank you for your question, Kimberly. That was a thank good you. question. Uh, and look for the answers on message boards, or at least uh, Cheryl's, Cheryl's notes for that. So uh, let's see. There's so many good questions here, Cheryl. Um, so this comes up periodically. An at-home member stalls out. Certainly clients that I work with stall out at time with his or her weight loss. What advice do you offer for navigating the dreaded plateau? The infamous week two on the ranch plateau. Happens to everybody. We don't know why. If, if we had this figured out, there wouldn't be plateaus, obviously. But it happens to everybody for different reasons. Um, but one of the things that I do to encourage people, if they've been on the ranch for a while and then they go home and they're working out really hard and they're trying to stick to the eating plan and the scale just doesn't budge, it is so frustrating because you're working out so hard, you're being so diligent sticking to the eating plan, you're journaling your food and that scale isn't moving and it makes people want to give up sometimes, which is of course the last thing that we want. So I have something I call the SOS uh, when people are stuck and I basically cut out the carbs. I cut out the grains and, um, and if they're really, really stuck, I'll cut out the beans and legumes as well. So it's kind of a, a paleo thing. You're still mm -hmm. having a lot of lean protein, some good fat, lots of fruits and vegetables, but usually that gets the scale moving. Another piece of this, sometimes the, uh, pe the plateauing has a little bit to do with regularity and constipation, which uh, we talk about a lot. It's all about input and output. And uh, so if you can laugh, that was a joke. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so when we're doing... A food journal, what I recommend if someone is having issues with regularity, um, to make an extra column and then after the uh, calories to keep track of their fiber and find out what their threshold is because uh, very often they're not getting enough fiber. Most Americans mm. are getting less than half what they need. We should be getting 25 to 35 grams of fiber a day and not in a fiber pill but from our fruits and vegetables and whole grains. Mm -hmm. Okay, so really taking a look at that fiber and uh, how, how often do you find that a person is under eating? Maybe, maybe not necessarily at the ranch but chronically, you know, it's been not quite getting enough to support that metabolism and that actually adding calories opens the door for weight loss. Is that something that you see? I see that a lot, and I see that a lot at the ranch. And as I mentioned, I do um, look at everybody's food journal every single day, and I am constantly trying to get people to eat more. We do not mm -hmm. have a problem with people eating too much because this eating plan is so satisfying. It's so filling. All the fruits and vegetables, the whole grain, all the fiber, all the high water foods, drinking water, exercising, um, getting back on a schedule, getting plenty of rest. Um, everybody feels really great and their energy levels are up, but um, this is a very satisfying eating plan and much more often than not, I'm encouraging people to eat more. Okay, great. And so that's all spelled out in your Six Weeks to a Healthier You, that book, yes. right? Yeah. Yes, okay. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, all right, here's another at-home question that uh, comes up a lot. So many of the members struggle to eat vegetables. What are strategies for working with picky eaters on the ranch? Yes, and there are a lot of picky eaters on the ranch every season. Uh, one of the questions I'm getting, we're gearing up to start season uh, 15 and I'm going to be meeting with the new cast very soon and talking to them about their eating habits at home before the show and I know after uh, this will be 14 seasons I know what the answers are going to be when I ask questions about how many fruits and vegetables do you have a day mm -hmm. I've heard many times do uh, french fries and count and, and potato or uh, right. french fries and ketchup do those count as vegetables right. or the lettuce on my burger is the extent of uh, sure vegetable consumption for some people. So uh, we really, really have to increase the curve on fruit and vegetable intake. And um, it's hard if some people have grown up not having any or only having 
you know, canned or overcooked vegetables. It's really hard to get them to try. I hate to say it. It's harder with men, but, but it is, mm -hmm. um, I've found in my personal experience. But um, so at the ranch, what we uh, what I really like to do is I take them on a grocery uh, store, to a grocery uh, store tour every season. And we spend a lot of time in the produce aisle. That's where I start. And I will pick up a few different items that a lot of the cast haven't had before. They may not have had an artichoke or they don't know how to eat it or cook it or a jicama or how to roast a bell pepper. And that's one of my favorite things is to do a demo in about a half an hour and, and show them how to make eight or 10 different vegetables that they've never tried. And so it's all about raising awareness, um, not only in choosing things that they haven't tried, but to show them really simple cooking techniques um, mm -hmm. that make it easy for them to do on the ranch. Which a lot of people have never learned, right? We didn't learn that in exactly. school. Right. And, you know, we grew up in an era where there's a lot of convenience food. So certainly the educational pieces opens the door, right? Hey, this is not too hard. This is tasty. So, exactly. um, okay, I great. To, I just wanted to say in the educational piece across the board is really, really important because as you know, in the, in the Biggest Loser Club and what we're doing at the resort and what we, what I do with the cast is we explain why we're having protein with a snack. We explain why you need to eat in the morning, why you need to food journal. And I think that so many people have tried so many different weight loss plans over the years and they've had mm -hmm. this yo-yo history, but it's a lot of the reason, a very big part of the reason it hasn't worked is that they didn't understand why they were mm -hmm. Right. They were taking these steps. They would eat this and, and not that and do this and not do that, but they, they didn't understand why. And when you explain uh, in detail why we're doing all these things, it makes it much easier to stick with it because it makes sense. Yeah, that's um, that totally makes sense. And um, there's so many rules, right? You follow the rules, you get results, but if you don't understand what's behind the rules, then it's not going to really stick. Uh, well, here's one more question that uh, it's, it's ties back into your culinary uh, education. Certainly a question that pops up a lot is the food prep. Uh, you just touched on it, a lot of picky eaters, a lot of people don't have skills, but how much time is devoted to educating, uh, educating the contestants on food prep and meal planning? Like how much of that food are they actually preparing for themselves and how much is uh, being prepared for them? That's a great question, and uh, I'm asked that all the time. We do not have a chef uh, for the show, per se. They, they prepare their own food. Um, they have somebody shop for them because they can't leave the ranch, but they learn to try a variety of different things because the shopper has this wonderful grocery list that's compiled by the trainers and myself of all the recommended foods. And then I will go down there several times uh, during the season and uh, after taking them to the store, I cook with them and I show them how to roast a pepper, uh, mm -hmm. this sort of thing. And then occasionally we have a guest chef appear on the show that might teach them a new technique. But we really want to give them uh, as many tools as possible because we don't know if they're going to go home in one week or 16 weeks and they need to be able to carry this on uh, when they get home and share it with their family and friends as well. Okay, that's great. So you've shared a lot of good insights here, Cheryl, and I'm wondering um, if there's anything else that you want to share, that anything that comes to mind based on you have so much information, so much knowledge to share, uh, any words of encouragement, any secret tips, anything there? Yeah, I just I want to encourage people at home um, to... First of all, don't be disappointed if you don't have the same uh, dramatic results that we have on the show. Um, they're, the, the cast on the show have this, it's their full-time job mm. to lose weight. They're not doing anything else. They're at the ranch uh, to devote themselves full-time to having uh, exercise and this eating plan and uh, this incredible instruction that um, helps that give them the tools to take it home. So w when you're trying to do this at home, you know, be kind to yourself. A pound or two a week is really, really fine. And the chances of your keeping it off is, is increased when you do it, you know, when you take it slow and steady. 
Um, the other thing is, you know, try to find a support system. If you don't have someone in your family or at work, uh, try to get out there and find a support system that's so helpful. It's really hard to do this on your own because for most people, it's a dramatic learning curve. There's a departure um, from so many old habits of trying to exercise more and, and rein in that willpower. Um, that's really, really important. And the other thing is just to be, um, be very, very happy with starting with small changes. Just change one thing at a time. You don't have to have these drastic uh, changes that we mm -hmm. are able to have on the show. Just one thing at a time, one foot in front of the other, and it will build upon itself. And just keep your eye on the ball. If you fall off the wagon one day, just get up and start the new day. Eat a little bit less, exercise more, do both. It's okay, everyone falls off the wagon now and then. Mm, that's great. That's really, so I heard shifting expectations, finding support that you can really count on that's there through thick and thin, um, and then really recognizing the small changes and celebrating those. Those are three huge keys. Uh, okay, we're gonna just take a quick break and, and do another uh, video, and we'll return right after that video. Thank you, Cheryl. The Biggest Loser has transformed thousands of lives. And now it's your chance to live the Biggest Loser lifestyle at home. Whether you want to lose 5 or 50 pounds, the Biggest Loser at Home program is personalized to your goals. You're doing it, girl. Commit to getting healthy today and you may be featured online or as an wow. actual success story in an episode next season. We challenge you, America, to get <coughs> healthy and live your best life. This is how we are going to save America. I have changed, and I'm a whole new person, and I'm so much better for Start it. Start your journey today with a customized meal and fitness plan. Believe in yourself. Get access to over 700 recipes, easy-to-use health trackers, and support from the Biggest Loser community, experts, and partners. There's millions of people watching the show. I hope we kind of reach out there and grab them and say, hey, get off this couch. You also get Dolbet's exclusive at-home exercises Make it and team challenges with the Biggest Loser ambassadors. Go to BiggestLoser.com and sign up now. All right. Well, we've covered a lot of ground tonight, and I've picked up some really key insights from you, Cheryl, and I'm sure everybody at, uh, that's joined us tonight, whether it's there with you in Malibu or our live panelists or those that are following it um, through Google, uh, Google Talk, Google+, have got, uh, I've gotten a lot of valuable information. Is there anything else that, uh, any parting remarks that you have on top of what you just shared? Yes, uh, don't wait until your birthday or New Year's or uh, who knows when to start. Start tomorrow. You deserve to have a healthier life. You're going to feel better. You're going to be happier. And um, start with small steps and start tomorrow. Yay. Thank you. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Cheryl. That was wonderful. And I want to thank uh, everybody for watching this uh, Biggest Loser Google Plus Hangout. Uh, I invite you to come join us on TheBiggestLoser.com and sign up for our newsletter to receive announcements for future programs. And we're looking forward to hosting more Hangouts in the, in the near future. So thank you very much for your participation tonight. You guys have a good evening.